Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today, we've got a special guest, Daryl Schuler from Seco Tools, and we're going to talk about inserts for the lathe. And he and I have been having this conversation, and I got to say, it's been spectacular. So we're going to share that conversation with you guys. So Daryl, tell me, what is your background in metalworking? Sure, not a problem. Um, to give you an idea, I started out in machining about 18 years ago. Uh, I started right out of school, and uh, I worked as a machinist. Went to school for it. Then I got into being a tool and die maker Excellent. with that. So. So you know what's going on. Yeah, essentially, I mean, I've worked with everything from manual machines all the way to CNC machines. Fantastic. You know, and across the broad spectrum. So good. So we've got an expert here. This guy hasn't just like, what do I want to say? He hasn't worn a tie his whole life. He knows what he's talking about. So this is going to be exciting. So let's get into some of the cutters. Sure. And some of the, I don't know if we want to start about the geometry of the cutters, where, where's really a good place to start? Well, a good place to really first start out with is to really understand what your insert is. Okay. And to be able to do that is you need to know what the nomenclature is on the insert. So whether it's a CNMG insert or a DNMG insert, um, what that means, you know, that little yeah. number that you see on there. Yes, the letter code exactly. is something I, I hear people talk about those letter codes and it just goes over my head. Yeah. So I yeah. hope we can get some clarity on that. We, I'll do my best to help you with that. <laughs> Everything that we have within that, that letter code for turning is standard. It's an industry standard. Okay. So whether it would be a Seco product or somebody else's product, okay. it'll still apply to it. Excellent. So Excellent. Well, what, I wanted to, what I could show you real quick here, too, is in a turning catalog, the Seco turning catalog, most guys that do what we do, they have a machinist handbook, all right? This turning catalog is almost just like a machinist handbook. In some ways better than what's in there between everything from nomenclature to machining practices, uh, speeds and feeds. And it's not only just a catalog of the products. So, I mean, it'll talk about insert grades, your holders, everything that pertains to turning in here. So this is kind of the Bible for us. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good one for that, yes, I would, I, I would say. I was, I was looking on your website last night, and you guys have 30,000 cutter. That just blows me away. Yeah, we There's have that many products that you guys have available. We have a very extensive product line. Um, a lot of research has gone into everything that's there, so that way it's the best that we have is there for the customer. Excellent, excellent. So, Speaking about the inserts that we're looking at, different edge preps and whatnot, if you go into the catalog and you look here on page, bear with me a minute, page 18 of the catalog here, see if, what we got here is, here is a WNMG 332 M3. This page tells you what each one of those means. All right, so number one, that's actually what your shape is, the shape of your insert. So you come over here, it's a trigon insert, all right, a W insert. If it was a C and MG, it would be this style, the 80 degree diamond. D is a 55 degree diamond, R is round, S is 90 degree, T is a 60 degree, I got to say, this is excellent. <laughs> you know, because, you know, these numbers of, or these letters have always been a, a mystery to me. So it's, it's great to finally crack that. So then we go to number two this position correct. is. This right here is your insert side clearance angle or the angle that you, your rake angle. Okay. Essentially on your insert. You know, if you take a brazed carbide tool, you have to grind, you want to grind side clearance in on that. Yes. Usually, you know, there are cases where you don't have to, but. That's what this gives you. So now if we look here, if it's an A, it'll have three degrees. If it's B, it'll be five. We're looking at an N here, so N is zero. So there's no rake angle. Okay. All right, okay. so when you look at it, it's a WN. So we know that it's the trigon style insert. Gotcha. And it has zero rake angle. Perfect. Okay. Next thing you go to is number three. All right. That's your tolerance of your insert. 
your thickness as well. So it's a W and M. We go down to M. Your tolerance is going to be plus or minus two thou okay. on the Thick, insert, on the, the IC of the insert. Now, that's from corner to corner Okay. on the insert. Let me grab one here and I'll show you. There we go. So you can see it from here yeah. to here. Okay. Okay. So it's not the distance from... It's not from here to here. It's just that. Okay. Correct. So that'll be two ten thousandths of an inch. Yeah. That'll be... That's the tolerance on okay. it. Okay. So that means, you know, it could vary there. You know, just like everything in machining, we have tolerances that we yes. work off of. So um, thickness-wise, you also have your tolerance. So from here to here, it'll give you... It gives you the number on that as well. Okay. For the, the size. So, but one number... So if we're into um, three, mm -hmm. this is given, and that tolerance is all the way around that yeah, part. It, okay, it, so there's exactly. not one for the thickness, there's not one for the length. It's just that one. It's that tolerance is for the thickness and the IC of the okay. insert. Okay, okay. All right, so, and that's, that's what they'll give you there. And that's standard for everybody. So then you have your G or four. That's your insert type, okay? So if we go down here, it's with hole and chip breaker on both faces. Okay. All right. So hole, all right, in the middle. Yeah. And chip breaker. Gotcha. All right. So now say we want to look at a insert that has no chip groove or edge mm -hmm. on there. That's a flat insert. That would actually be an A. So it'll, say, it'll have a hole with no chip breaker. Gotcha. All right. So each one of these stands for, for something within the, the uh, insert type. That is cool. So I've, known that I've always known they meant something. You know, like in welding rods, I know what those numbers mean. Yep. It's, well, and that's the thing, you know, it's, it's a way, there's so many different variants. Mm -hmm. But basically, we're always going with the fir first four digits. Next three, it just gets into coatings or? Well, that's actually the next three, five, six, and seven, that's your size of your insert. Okay, okay. that's actually very, that's a very crucial one. Yes, All right. okay. So, you know, depend, that's going to determine which holder that you're going to use for that cutter. It's also going to determine your nose radius. All right, that's okay. where you see this. So now we're looking here. This is, we're going to, five is a three. So three here, it's a three-eighths insert okay so where's that measured from then that's your IC so if, let's just go to a picture of an insert here real quick see this here so this area right here see it says D that's your IC so it's the inside okay area. so it's not from point to point exactly it's not from point to point it's this it's the, the width of the insert okay in here so that being a three, it's a three eighths. Gotcha. That's the thickness on that one. Now back to our page on here. Six, it's the same setup, what it gives you. Okay. So it's a 332 is your thickness. Okay. Uh-huh. Seven is your nose radius. This is important. So if you have a 332 or a um, 331, mm -hmm. it's a different nose radius. So 331 would be a 164th radius gotcha. nose. A 32 is a 132nd. I have two inserts here. These are 433 inserts, CNMG 433. This is a 433 right here. Sorry. This is a 433, this one right here. And this is a 432, okay? okay. You can see the difference on the nose radius. This is a larger nose radius, smaller nose radius. Yeah. Question would be, well, why do you need a different nose radius? All right. If you have a larger nose radius, your insert is going to be stronger. Okay. It's going to be able to handle a little bit more of a cut. It could be just as simple as you have that size radius that you're coming back to on a shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, the smaller nose radius, you usually tend to get a higher finish. So, I mean, all these things uh, have come into play when they design th these products for us. Yes. So now nine, that's your chip groove. Okay. Okay. And that's where we were, we were but talking we're about two earlier. Different numbers here. Yep. Well, what you're looking at here is it, it's the nine will be 
it's one chip group. Okay. So whether it's a, you know, you're not going to see a three or a four there. You'll see M3. Okay. All right. Which that's going to depict what style insert you have. Let me grab these two out of here. If you look here, all right, this is an MF2. Okay. So it's a different nose chip okay. preparation on there. MF1. You can see the difference there. Um, now that's going to help you to determine what you're going to machine. Okay. What, what do you want to use this insert to machine on? All right. MF1 is a very positive geometry. Okay. This is positive as well, but it's a little bit more negative. It's a little bit tougher. Okay. All right. Whereas this you would want to use in uh, stainless, um, ink and now super alloys, different okay. products like that. Oh, I like that term, super alloys. Super I know. Everybody <laughs> likes that one. <laughs> But so, I mean, that's really the breakdown when you look out on a box of inserts on the back here, you can see it. You'll see that nomenclature right there. Okay. It tells you what it is. Now you will also see two different ones. Uh -huh. One is ISO standard, the other one is ANSI. You know, your info there. And when you're looking at a box of Seco inserts, um, instead of saying, hey, I need a box of WNMGs to your uh, rep technical representative like me, or to your distributor that you're purchasing them from, this EDP number here is what they live by. Okay. That's the actual part number. It's like anything else, all right, you know, this is the model. Yes. That's the part number for it. Okay, so, so, if, I, so if you guys want to order these, this number is good for you to know, but the ordering number is actually the next one in the bottom right-hand corner. So that's just great to know, which also gets us to the point of, so Seco doesn't sell directly to machine shops or guys like me. We go through MSC, Entco, um, whomever, and we just go through their catalog. And if I wanted to order something, I found it in here, I could call them up and they find it for me. Is that the correct? Right? Correct, correct. Okay. Um, they, they're very familiar with our products. You know, they, they know how to find them. Um, okay. uh, different distributors you know, that, that we work with, they know how to get to there. If they don't, I'm the guy they call. Okay. So for, for Georgia anyway. <laughs> <laughs> little, little. But now, hold on, let me take that back. So if somebody in Hawaii wants to talk to you, you're not going to go see them? I wouldn't mind it, but I'm pretty sure that they would not cover it. Okay, okay. I just, want to, I just want clarification on that. So this is great. So let's get more into the detail of the... So we've got this covered, which was just excellent. Now let's talk about a little bit more in detail in the cutters. This is a selection of the 30,000 cutting tools that Seco offers. Representing proven technology, they boost efficiency, increase quality, and reduce costs. But tools alone are not a solution. At Seco, we understand that success in today's manufacturing environment requires more than a focus on tools. It requires a dedication to people a dedication to understanding your individual needs. Our business may be cutting tools, but our focus is you. Hi guys, I want to take a break from my video and talk about a wonderful gift that I got from Niagara Cutters and also Seco Tools. And I'm not the only one that got this gift. And Dennis Nolan actually headed up this project. I think there's about 20 of us YouTube creators or so that got one of these packages. Keith Fenner got one, Mr. Pete got one, Adam Booth has a set, and several more, and I get to be along with that group. And we're also gonna get to meet Dennis Nolan at the Bar Z Summer Bash 2016 on June 25th. Very excited about that. All right, let's get back to the video and keep learning from Daryl about different types of carbide inserts. Okay, Daryl, now what are you going to show us with the inserts? Well, we're going to take a look, look at the chip groove options that we have. Um, okay. we, we've gone over the nomenclature, so we know what to look at for what style insert we want to use, what it is when we read it. But um, now we're going to get into a little bit more depth on what each chip groove is for, why it's that way. I mean, we won't go over every one. Right. There's just there's a lot, <laughs> but I'll give you an idea well, so you understand. And that's is. our goal is to keep this simple because this is I look at this as a 101 class, yep. and we're really just trying to 
get people to the next level of, well, I shouldn't say the next level. We want to get them to the level of being comfortable with the inserts and what's possible. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, you know, for us, for us smaller guys that have the small shop, that's what we want to talk about. But I got to tell you guys, we'd already talked about some of this, and it's cool. All right, well, what we have here, this is a small sampling of some of our chip groups. Oh, let me just back up for a second. He's not giving me this. <laughs> <laughs> no, this just, is mine. <laughs> just to let you know, that's his. He don't, I, don't get, I don't get to have this, at least not yet, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, what we have here, you know, there's, you'll see a whole bunch of different edge preps uh -huh. on here. Now, you know, this could be this one right here, MF4. You know, this is an MF5 here. This is an MF1. Now, you might sit there and say, okay, well, why are there five different versions of MF mm -hmm. chip groove? Um, to keep in mind as well, too, here's another thing. Uh, every manufacturer has their own chip groove. Yes. So, you know, whereas we have an MF4, mm -hmm. um, one of our competitors might have but, something different. But now, but the, the dimensions are the same. Yes. So these correct. would fit in other tool holders. Yep. From other companies, exactly. so that's standardized. Yeah, we're looking at uh, CNMG inserts here. Okay. So any holder for a CNMG insert, this will it will it will take it'll accept right. this insert. Okay, good. So, but now, when it that MF stands for something, all mm -hmm. right, medium finishing. Okay. Perfect. When you look in our catalogs, you know we have the it breaks it down for you. So what we'll have is on this side, oh, there, let me get to that page. Grab this over here for us. So here you got this, here's your letters. F stands for finishing, M is for medium turning, R is for roughing. Okay. Okay. So, you know, and now generally there's chip grooves are designed for certain types of material. Okay. All right. This gives you an instance, you know, an example. So an MF4, it's essentially something we would use that for stainless steel. It um, doesn't mean you can't use it okay. in another material. But that's where it'll be its most Yeah, that's most exactly. Effective. That's what we designed it for. Okay. So now, then you come to an, an FF2. That's fine finishing, okay, in steels, some stainless steels. You know, they, they cross over these different yes. chip groups. But now let's talk about the difference between a fine finish and a medium finish. Are there certain numbers for that? I know we've got like, you know, I want to say roughness tests. Mm -hmm. Does yeah, that, really yeah, does that equate or is it just kind of a general term? Well, this is, this is our, our general term okay. that we have here. Okay. Um, when you, it, I didn't know if there was hard th numbers that go with them. Like based off of that specific? Yeah. Yeah, and I, um, we have, if you look, you know, it's kind of like a medium medium shirt, you know, exactly. size-wise. It's just it's a medium. It's not an exact 42. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's so many different variables that go into a surface finish. Okay. Um, you can't really say, okay, if I use this insert, I'm going to get this finish, period. Gotcha. You know? But this helps okay. you define Good. that that's, that, And that's that why I want to make sure that I got clarity and understanding. No that. problem. And now what you have here, too, you know, that MF4, that mm -hmm. number means something, okay? The lower the number... All right, that goes for the lower the edge strength of that insert. The higher the number, the higher the edge strength. Okay, so, and that number starts from one and goes up to 10 or nine? Up to nine. Up to nine, okay. So, um, so we stay in the single digits. Then. Exactly, so if you look over here, this just gives you a little idea of what we're talking about here. You'll see land, a land the land over here after the chip, here's your groove, okay. and you have land. This is gonna have a stronger edge here then say, this is an MF2. Then you have an MF3. Okay. I mean, excuse me, an M3. Uh -huh. All right, that M3 is a, is a much stronger edge okay. prep. And, and it's got groove. a flatter land. Exactly. And that land, if you guys look at it really closely, it's not the sharp edge that comes up. It get, kind of flattens out. That is correct. You know, whereas if you had an MF1, mm -hmm. it's very sharp, positive insert. So there's almost no land there at all. Okay. For it, it comes right up to a sharp point. Okay. You know, but and within this catalog, if any if any of you have a Seco catalog, you'll see all the different chip grooves mm -hmm. here, and it'll give you an idea of what type of material okay. it's good for, and it'll also give you your machining range mm -hmm. 
as well. So whether or not, you know, uh, this FF1, for example, uh, our machining range is from three thousandths to twelve thousandths inch per rev, okay. you know, and it also gives you your type of depth, your depth of cut that you can go. So depth of cut is very important when you look at chip grooves. I'll bet, yes. Okay. So what happens is on that edge prep of this insert, okay, you have... Let's keep with this one here. It's nice and simple. Yeah, this one here. You have this groove where you want your chip to go into. Okay. Okay. If you don't have enough depth of cut mm -hmm. on that insert, you're not going to use the effectiveness. Of oh, I got you. Yes. So we got to get that forced into the material exactly. so you get into that chip breaker. Exactly. And, and, and what will happen, too, is if you don't have enough on it, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're rubbing more than you're cutting. Okay. So, you know, it, it won't really cut like it's supposed well, to. Well, I hear that's kind of the common mistake people make when starting out with these is they're just not digging in. Exactly. You, we don't no. treat, we, we have to treat these with respect, but you also have to hit them rough, hit, get in there and... Exactly. Because they're designed to cut metal. Correct. Time you know, and, and the way the, the technology is now, we design our carbide inserts to cut harder, faster, yes. and be in the most efficient amount of time. No jokes, guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I mean, you have your different chip grooves here. So here's an MF2 and that's an MF1. You can see the, the, the large uh -huh. difference in between them. You know, on this one here, it's, it's a much more strong nose okay. than what this will have. It's got a much sharper, sharper edge on here on the corner. Uh -huh. That's what we, we, you know, we had talked about before. Yeah. Well, now the edges here, I mean, they're kind of like snowflakes. Everyone seems to be different. Mm -hmm. And is that to help curl the chip off differently or peel it differently or throw the chip in a different direction or? It is, it is to help break the chip. Okay. All right. So each one of these chip grooves mm -hmm. are designed for, like, like I had mentioned before, for a different type of material. Okay. Okay. So what um, Seco has done is they've done extensive studies and tests in-house, and they found that this geometry with these style shapes is pressed into the insert mm -hmm. is most effective when cutting in, um, let's take this one, for example, MF4. Mm -hmm. It's most effective when cutting in stainless. Okay. You know, and so that's what we kind of use that for. So it breaks, you know, get, kind of gets into the, does it get into the, I want to say, the crystalline structure of the metal and takes advantage of that or finds those weak points and... Exactly. You know, I mean, what, what, you're, what you're really doing is your chip formation means is a lot. When, yes. it, when it gets down to that, that might be something we want to talk about a whole, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. <laughs> we, but, we got more videos coming. We've already talked about that. <laughs> But what you have here, you know, is it's a wide selection. So if you're working on something, you know, you can, if you, you have an insert that doesn't work for you, you can use a different one. All right. So you say, okay, you know what? This insert grade, say you're using a CNMG uh, MF4 TP2501. Mm -hmm. The TP2501 is the grade. That's our steel grade. Okay. Okay. Or, or it's our duratomic chrome inserts. Yes. Something that we brought out new, new last black. year. Exactly. Chrome is the new black. <laughs> All right. Um, with that that's insert, this one that's this one right here. Yes. Correct. With that insert, you know, when you're cutting in steel, you have several different types of chip grooves to choose from, depending on what you're doing. So say you're using an MF4 and you're not getting the finish you want, you know, well, you can switch to an MF2 and probably get a better finish. Okay. Okay. You know, maybe change your speeds so you, and feeds so you, up a little so bit. So there is no exact science. We try to make it one, but there's enough variables to where we have to experiment. Exactly. exactly. We can start out in this one area and then experiment from there. Exactly. You know, one of the things that I do mainly when I go to customers is test products. Okay. I test, you know, with them. They take their application. Now, based on experience, I might say, you know what? This is going to work very well because I've used it at A, B, or C customer. Yes. So I know that this will work for them. Mm -hmm. All right. Sometimes you don't have that. It's a new application or something that you haven't worked on before. Well, that's where you go in and you work with the customer. Well, let me ask you this. So we know that materials are going to react differently, mm -hmm. different types of aluminum or different types of steel. But how about machines? 
Do you find that machines have their own personality that you have to work within? Yes, definitely. Um, depending on the amount of horsepower and torque you have in your machine is okay. whether it's going to determine how hard you can push that insert. Okay. Um, okay. If you have a machine that has a very low torque rating, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to take a really large depth of cut, okay. you know, because it'll stall the machine out. Gotcha. You know, and, okay. uh, and it won't work out for you. One of the things, too, to uh, always keep in mind with these edge preps, say something's not working for you, but you can't figure it out, or you see a certain type of wear mm -hmm. on that insert, this right here is very handy. Yes, let's talk about that. So you have an insert wear failure chart okay. here. Okay, now on this chart, so in normal machining, you have different things that happen, and uh, you'll see this result, the end results on your insert. Okay. So you have normal flank wear, cratering, uh, built up edge. This is a big one when it comes to stainless or super alloys, your favorite word. <laughs> so, you know, and then chipping. Um, this chart is very handy. Uh, if you have your a SECO representative, ask him to get it for you. Okay. Um, they can put it on the, mach the machine okay. for your operators, whoever's using the machine. So this, this chart is really to diagnose if you're using your chip or if you're using your insert correctly. Exactly. You know, I mean, you, you it's kind of like I remember seeing spark plugs. There's, you know, you'll see in the back of an old manual, if your spark plug looks like this, this, or this, this is the problems. Correct. And we're in the same category here. Correct. Excellent. And this is, this right here is usually what you want to see, normal flank wear. Okay. That's the correct type of wear you should see on your insert. It means okay. you have a good cut, you know, and your, everything is, is working properly. Mm -hmm. So when you get built up edge though, for example, I'm going back to that one again, because that's always a big one, because what happens a lot of times is a machinist will go too slow okay. for, they'll cut at too slow of an RPM, too slow of a feed rate, and you'll get that built up edge when you're working in aluminum or uh, okay. stainless. On this chart, it'll say what to look for. It'll show you when to expect it. It gives you, and here it gives you corrective actions. So, I mean, th this is also available at secotools.com. Okay. The, it, you, we have them on there as well that you could actually download the PDF copy. Okay. And I'll, I'll give you guys links for that too. That, this is, fa this is a very useful. Definitely going to get a copy of that. Well, this is my copy. That is your copy. <laughs> <laughs> You put that right above your lace so that way uh, you know. It's going it's it's to find a good home for sure. <laughs> Excellent. So let's now, one of the things you're pointing out to me, actually it's not, you know, we've talked a lot about the different geometry, you know, on this edge here, but there's also geometry here of where it, you know, concaves down in a little bit. Can you expand on that a little more? Sure. Um, essentially what you, what, what this is from, this is, the back relief from putting that positive rake on okay. the insert, that positive geometry on the So on the it's edge. going to help slice through a little bit more. Is that the goal? Exactly. Of that? Exactly. Okay. You know, there's there's different um, thought processes of of, of uh, how different materials should be machined depending on who's doing it. You know, um, a lot of people believe in a more negative geometry insert. Other ones believe in more positive geometry okay. inserts. Okay. Um, and that's just uh, that's just machining theory. Uh -huh. um, so, but what this would be used for, as you can see, you have your brake on here as well. Mm -hmm. This is a real sharp, it's got a ground edge. Mm -hmm. That would be something you would use maybe for like an ID bore okay. on, a, on a boring bar, you know, where you're trying to achieve a real high surface finish. Okay. You're not taking a huge depth of cut, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you need that sharper edge geometry there so you can get a good finish. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I just find this subject just fascinating. And you just see, just through, what do we got here, nine, ten, we got ten, ten inserts, ten and this isn't even getting us started, is it? No, there's, there's about, um, don't quote me, but I think there's about 20 different edge chip grooves and edge preps that we do, nice. you know, just, just for our inserts. So, and that's turning. Yes. Milling is a whole milling, nother world. We'll get into milling another time. Daryl? This has been fantastic. I hope you guys out there have enjoyed this. We will have Daryl back. There's so much more stuff to talk about. We haven't even talked about tool holders yet. And I think it's really an important subject because knowing what inserts is important, but how to hold them correctly is also just as important. Yes, definitely. And there's all sorts of ways they can be clamped. 
There's different shapes of holders, how they have a negative rake, a positive rake, a neutral, and we need to learn how to use it. Because I also know that we may have only two edges on, on an insert, but like this one here, uh, let's see if I can get this out. Sometimes you can. You know, we have another side, so how do we take advantage of that? How do we get the most bang for our buck when we buy these and get every corner used? So, so next time, we will get that done. Daryl? Thank you very Thank much. you very much. And guys, thanks for watching. If you guys uh, haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to leave your positive, supportive comments. I'm sure <laughs> Daryl will appreciate that too. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. <laughs>